Okay. I will I will talk about food and um, the categories uh, I use are the dialogue, reflection, and include. And let me and we have a famous quote by Maurice Schlick. Why I'm talking about my justification. Um, sorry, I want to switch. Sorry, please. Okay. Uh, Locke maintains, although not the science itself, philosophy record to be recognized as the queen of the science, dominating them all, because it is their very soul. In fact, there can be no more vital part of the science than the activity without which all their propositions will remain meaningless, which is philosophy. <laughs> that permits me to talk. That is all. Okay. Um, there is this notion of biocultural diversity. It's very interesting. Too bad they don't accept it at FAO, but uh, we are debating the diversity of life in all its manifestations, biological, cultural, linguistic. And uh, we, uh, the last quote, we need to start a conversation for France is a huge, but includes everyone, since the environmental challenge we are undergoing and its human roots concerns and affects us all. Now, food is culture, is art, is science, we know these things, I don't need to take time. Just imagine that in material heritage, food is part of a library. You go to a library and there are pilot kitchens so that, uh, so that uh, people, young people, can understand about food in, 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 its, in many forms. What is food exactly? It's a relation about politics, ethics, self-understanding. I am what I eat. <laughs> what, what should we eat? Food is a product, but eating is an action. Therefore, food is ethics, but it is also, it has an impact on humans, animals, and the environment. So it, it, it's about impact. A product, but an action, but there's an impact. So this is a very important uh, committee of FAO, which I follow. I, I, I not miss any meeting. A committee of Food Security. So what is security? Security is uh, wars, social security, energy security, water security, food security. The definition of food security, availability, access, utilization, and stability. This is what we need to talk about. And uh, most importantly, food should never be used as an instrument for political and economic pressure. And we have seen it uh, in, in the last month, unfortunately. How should be food be distributed? This is uh, the big question um, behind uh, zero hunger. We need to look <coughs> at uh, agri-food <laughs> systems. And we need to have knowledge in, uh, every, in, in food distribution processes. And we need to take care of power asymmetries among stakeholders. These are things we have been talking already, but uh, I point them out. Now, let me. Uh, Dumbarton Oaks and Lake Success. Uh, Dumbarton Oaks uh, was convened by Eleanor Roosevelt uh, in, in 44, and Lake Success is the start of the United Nations in 46, uh, and, uh, and the UN Resolution uh, ARES 71, which uh, Jeff Sachs contributed to shape. So here you know the icons. And, uh, and let, let me see this. Um, there is, there is a just and linear development of humanity in which everyone must be guaranteed basic rights as minimum sufficient resources, satisfaction of basic needs for a life and dignity from all points of view. Hence, uh, the 17 goals of the 2030 agenda. Here at FAST, let me remember that, uh, beginning in October 19, so already, already four years, um, Marcelo Sanchez Sorondo and Jeffrey Sachs have proposed to place alongside the text of Agenda 2030, which is the Magna Carta of Christianity, can be defined, which always offers itself as a value reference, even for the third millennium, the text of the Beatitudes. So the UDHR, said Eleanor, Ru Eleanor Roosevelt, is the Magna Carta of humanity. The Beatitudes is the, the Magna Carta of Christianity. And here are the Beatitudes, Luke 6, concise, and Matthew 5, 3, 12, longer form. And here at PASS, we have looked into each of them, making a, a, a significant effort, I would say, for preparing discussion now. How can, we one, how can one be blessed in a condition of 
material and spiritual poverty, moral and bodily suffering, violence, oppression, <coughs> aggression, social offense, and so on. You, you read that. Persecution and discrimination, this is in the, in the Beatitudes. How, how about acting? Um, while waiting for justice to be fulfilled, for poverty to be abolished, for injustice to be redressed, what, how can one sustain this? Can one be happy in adversity? Here, uh, the text goes further, affirming, as Sister has made it clear, a logic called paradoxical. There is a blessedness in these conditions, a possibility of light, of redemption, not only one day, perhaps at the end of the world, but already now, during the life one faces daily with its conflicts, injustices, and miseries. And this is the point of view I'm making of Italy. This is where we are, not all over the world, but everybody is, and we, we too. The bliss that the text of the Beatitudes proposes is not material. It is something one experiences and feels deeply, that gives one serenity, confidence, and hope, even if from an emotional point of view one is tribulated, is troubled, even if external circumstances are very unfavorable. And here we have the spirituality of the West that coincides with the spirituality of the East. And um, mm. um, I have, uh, we have had the pleasure of uh, uh, having here at PASS uh, uh, on my fifth, the China Development Research Foundation that brought about uh, their results on, 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 on zero hunger and no poverty. And, uh, and uh, these are very good positions, I think, for, uh, start for keeping the dialogue alive and have fruit. I thank you for your attention. Oh, yeah.